Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today to share with you things about Vapor. Uh, and again, I want to say thank you for View Nation. Give me this opportunity. Well, my English isn't very good now, so I will speak very slow. Mm. And let me introduce myself first. My name is Li Zumo, and I, and my GitHub handle is Little Sound. I'm an indie developer from China, and I'm really passionate about open source. I'm a part of the Vue Vapor team for over the past year. For over the past year, I've been deeply involved in building this exciting new feature for Vue. And besides working on Vue, I also create some firm projects like Nolabase, QRS, GUI AI, and Interline Translate. Mm. And I also part of the Elk team. All right, so let's get started. You can say, 10 years ago, we came out to the scene and built an amazing community. From that, we also got Vit, a very popular front-end build tool. Today, I want to tell you about the next upgrade in Vue. It's called Vapor. Uh, if you are a big fan of Vapor, you might already know what I'm going to introduce. Vapor is Vue without the virtual DOM, like Solid. Right? Uh, yes, but instead of getting into this too much, I think about this in another way. If you were even you, the creator Vue, how would you make Vue even faster? Well, if you look at the current performance rankings of front-end frameworks, first, you'll notice that React performance score is 68. Mm. Now, what ideas would you think? How would you go about making Vue even faster? Continue to use virtual DOM and then do more optimization? Uh, if you have seen some of Evan's talk, you might know that. Yes, Vue has already added a lot of optimizations to the virtual DOM. So now Vue is here and it's scored 80. If you still want to get faster, what would you do? How will you solve this? Mm, you may want to know who is the best one on the performance list. It solved this, but how did it? Mm. Yeah, that one is for new ideas. It's the golden standard of this benchmark, which is 100 out of 100. So, what is vanilla? It's the default flavor of the ice cream we eat. So, vanilla is the native DOM operations code. Yes, it directly operates on the DOM itself without virtual DOM. Uh, but why is it so fast? It's because it's highly flexible. If the person who writes it master enough optimizations techniques, uh, they can do a lot of hack tricks beside on this test to make the performance even better. Let's take a look. For example, reduce updates. First, let's look at a bad approach. The bad approach is that you got an element and if you want to change the width and the height and you have several values, then you might write this way, changing one value at one time. Uh, but because it will rerun every time, this would be very slow. 
So there, a better approach is that you can first merge all the updates and then apply them at once. Here, another example, element delegations. For example, the bad approach is that I have a list with 10,000 rows, and each item has a delete operations, so I have 10,000 delete attacked. This will be very slow too. The bad approach is that we could have one listener over the parent and then look at for the element we want to handle it. This way, we have only one event listener, so it will be very fast as well. There are many other optimization techniques, such as template reuse, reactivity, programming, and so on, which can also speed it up. So we actually don't need virtual DOM, right? But sometimes using native DOM, DOM APIs directly is hard. You need to learn many tricks, and you also need to think about how to work together with your team. Mm. That's when we use frameworks. But how do we solve this problem? The answer is right here. The answer is in bit. We haven't been directly writing Doom APIs for a long time, and we also don't write actually running this directly. We? Uh, yeah, we actually are install Vit to help us. Because beside Vit, we know there's something called compiler. It can take the source code, like view SFC file, and based on the rollers you set up, compare it into runtime code. Mm, actually, we have been using the way. Uh, actually, we have been using this way to compile a virtual DOM runtime in view for a long time. But like I said before. Virtual DOM runtime is too far from real DOM operations. It is not easy to change, and in every re-render, extra work runs every time, whether you need to them or not. So we want to use compiler, but take away virtual DOM, and use compiler to build DOM options right away. So. We want to use compiler, but take away virtual DOM and use compiler to build DOM operations right away. So back to Vapor. If we make a smart enough compiler, it, it can take a view SFC file and compile it into native DOM operations. And it know how to use these hack tricks to operate optimize performance. So our framework can actually performance close to vanilla in benchmark tests. This is the foundation of Vapor's all. So congratulations, you invented Vapor. So from that, let's look what this way makes for real Vapor. First of all, Vapor is a subset of view. So you just need to switch the Vapor flag on. You can get faster speed and without learning a new framework to use it. And so how fast, it, how fast is it? So how fast is Vapor? If you say vanilla this performance score, is 100. The Vapor scored now is 90. That's faster than the virtual DOM. And thanks to Vapor compiler's architecture, besides template syntax, 
We also can compile it from JSX to Vapor Runtime. Big thanks to Gaufe for adding this JSX feature. And because there is no virtual DOM, Vapor's runtime size is smaller right now. Compared to virtual DOM mode, right now, compared to virtual DOM mode, the runtime size is 53 percent smaller. So we covered a lot just now. So Vapor is Vue's new upgrade. It's a subset of Vue, and they can work together. Vapor makes things faster and bundle size smaller. It will have better JSX support, and Vapor has many more plans for the future. All these features wouldn't be possible without every contribute in the Vue community. I want to thank for their work. So about contribute, let me introduce my way to open source. I remember when I first contributed with Vapor, one day I saw Kevin on Twitter saying, who wants to help write real Vapor? If you can find me, I can teach you how to do it. At that time, I didn't know what Vapor was, but I was really into Vue. So I bought a train ticket for the next day. To find Kevin. And after I came back, I looked at Vapor's code all night, but couldn't understand it. And it's too difficult. I cried, feeling like I could get it at all. Uh, but literally, in the next day, I looked many more times. And finally, I understood it. No, I've written lots of code for Vue. Uh, but now, I write lots of code for Vue Vapor. So, when first join open source, stepping out what felt safe. Interest is really the best teacher and gives you lots of energy. Later, I also sent PRs to Vue call. That, that PR, that PR took about a year to be accepted. The same kind of PR in Vue Vapor would take just a day or two. The people who keep the project running need to check each PR very carefully to avoid breaking things. And these big projects often have many PRs waiting with only two or three people, uh, two or three contribute, checking them. So uh, the people who keep the project running need to check each PR very carefully to avoid breaking things. And these big projects often have many PRs waiting with only two or three full-time Mean people checking them. So, so it makes sense why we wait so long when contribute to these projects. Instead, contribute new projects like Vapor that you like and that are growing faster is a bad choice. They accept PR faster, often change their code and have more chances to contribute. For example, things that, things that don't yet or problems that need to fixing, many of these are easy to find and fix. Really, even then, even after I read Will Vapor's code all night, when I want to find Kevin, I had no idea what I could do. And Kevin had to think for a long time too. Back then, I knew almost nothing about Vapor. 
uh, and at and and that day, Kevin taught me a lot, but it was hard to understand all this complex stuff in a such a short time. The only single things I remember is I could help write unit tests because if I could fix the broken tests, I could mark the tests as to do or feeling in this PR. This way, all the in this community would know there was a to-do test here. This is very important. Well, reading our old test and trying to write a new ones, I learned how to the project worked at a deeper level. Then the next day, after I went back, I found a broken test that was very simple, and I saw I know how to fix it. I decided a I decided to submit a fixed PR. This is a good thing about writing unit tests. You quickly find some test cases that you think you know how to fix. Don't worry. Don't worry about making mistakes. This was our next step. Fix something. If you keep doing it, you'll get better at this process. And by this time, all the project contribute will know who you are. If they want to add a simple new features, you can confidently say, I want to try to build this. Again, don't worry about mistakes or feeling at this point. You are get started to help building a new feature. As you understand the project better and become known by other developers for your help, you will do more than just write code. You will also share your ideas and and other active and and other actual helpers will build them. By this time, you will become an important part of this project. Doing all these things take a lot of time, and even more as you get deeper into the community. Based on how much time you have and what feels comfortable to you, you can stop anywhere along this path and enjoy this level's open source work. That's my Vapor open source story. Uh, and I very hope to see your story here too. So today we invented Vapor together. Then we talked about its performance, its architecture, its roadmap, and thanks to the contributes and got my open source story. That's all for this talk. I pre-test this session many times, so I hope it's not too bad. And I hope you can like it, and I hope you find something for it. And thank you for joining us.